whether you're for or against abortion, the rules are killing our people because they go beyond abortion. They say you can't even go to the doctor. If you go to the doctor with your baby, everything is suspect because some pot-bellied men, old men, sitting on a bench somewhere make a decision for boys and girls, and we let them. They can't have a baby, won't ever have a baby too old to do anything. And they can sit around and tell women what they ought to do. And we got people dumb enough to go vote for them again and again and again. We are called by God. Not to despise or hate these people, but pray for them, and you do what you got to do. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks to you this blessed day. Thank you, Lord, for the voices from on high, heavenly angelic voices that moved us to higher places, oh God, and moved us to want to yearn to do better. So may this service, though the weather is cloudy and people are snoozing at home, Help us, oh God, to be empowered to make your world the way it ought to be. Enlighten our minds, soften our hearts, and unite us that we, your children, might have our marching orders and do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. You know the, you know the name Dr. Charles Drew. Great surgeon, brilliant doctor, and his work with whole blood plasma and blood transformed medicine and transformed the way, we, way war is handled and way the wounded are handled and saved so many lives during World War II and just changed the world. But there's an urban myth that he died because he could not get in a white hospital. That is an urban myth. He was, he was in an accident somewhere around Tuskegee or somewhere in Alabama, and he was hurt so bad when they did get him to the hospital, he passed away. But the myth has some foundation because so many people died because they could not get attention at white hospitals. Because the rules said segregation, separation of the races, you can't do this and that. So we, we, we love rules. And we are expected to abide by rules. And when rules become more important than people, we're already in trouble. So this sermon is from rules to righteousness. I love this text. Don't you like the text? For 18 years, this woman had been seeking help and attention, 18 long years to suffer. And when she can finally get help, instead of the world applauding and saying, thanks be to God, that she has this, this beautiful mother, whoever she was, had, has been touched. And, and, and we ought to be celebrating the holy hand of God that reaches down and, and touches her and says, you, you're healed. But oh no, the good old boys and the good old girls, you broke the rules. You, you, you <laughs> she, <laughs> on Sunday, come on now. We, we get a sermon, we get a few songs and preaching and teaching, and we don't heal nobody on Sunday. The rule says. Now, the rules have changed and, cha and constantly changed, and sometimes the rule makers aren't morally grounded. Two, last week, a judge in West Tennessee was sent to jail for being drunk. Now, it wouldn't be so bad, but this judge always followed the rules, and he, to the letter of the law, if you were drunk and driving, he threw, threw the book at you. What they didn't realize is that in his own territory, the, the police officers would carry him home. But fortunately, he was in the wrong territory, and the state troopers carried him to jail, and he's in there whining and crying, telling about my life is over. What about the people that you didn't respect and, you, and the rules were important for them and yet you couldn't see it until you, you get in trouble. Fact, going back the same time, it was, we just discovered that one judge was told to pay up $108 million and somebody had to pay it because what they had been doing is getting paid to put our kids in jail. 
He was following the rules, but the rules did not apply to him. We're in, we're in trouble today because the rules say don't give anybody any water when they're standing in line voting. They don't know us. Okay, I can't stand 150 feet. I can stand 170 feet. You come and get the water. And what you can do is you hold my place, I hold your place. They're not going to stop us. Centuries, and we, we've done this for years. We have stood firm. So, so these rules don't apply. Rules, people matter more than rules, and rules from rights to righteousness is so important. So why do we follow rules? Because we benefit from it. Why is Tim Scott following the rules? <laughs> because the rules told him you m might be president. He has as much, and this has been recorded, Lord have mercy. He has as much chance of getting, pre be president of the snowball in hell. It ain't going to happen. Clarence Thomas, following the rules, voting and, 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 and looking at law and data and stuff and okaying voter suppression and all those things because he follows the rules. But the gospel dictates people matter more than rules. The gospel dictates how you live so how you leave here. The gospel dictates if you're only concerned with climbing the ladder, somebody's going to cut it off on you. Joe Lowry said it so well. You're climbing the ladder. You're trying to win the rat race. At the end of the race, you're still a rat if you win. We are called to do God's bidding, not our bidding. We are called to love people unconditionally, and we're called to say sometimes you got to break the rules so people can live. What would have happened if the rules had not been, if Dr. King had not broken the rules? And others, and, and even Mother Teresa, if she goes to work with lepers, and, and they say no, if she did not break the rules, we are dictated by God, not by the fam, not, not by the law. God's laws come first. And, and, and there's a biblical witness that says, read it. And when you read it, you got a foundation for all the things you do. You just can't run out there saying, well, I think, he, I think the Lord said this, and I think he said that. It's here written over centuries to tell us that people matter more than rules and you gotta live a righteous life and that means building strong solid relationships breaking the rules 150 about two hours drive from here muscle shows alabama it's a mystical place because for years muscle shows has been rumored to be like a utopian place hidden where people of all races and all social, socioeconomic groups can come together and make music and have fun and do stuff. And people are running around in muscle shows trying to find out where they're doing this stuff at. <laughs> Where's the place that black folk and white folk and Hispanic folk and poor and other folk are getting together? They had roadhouses and bars and some churches. Well, this stuff was happening, but the rules said it cannot happen. And Muscle Shows in 1969, they started this studio. And everybody who somebody has been there to make music, the rules said, well, I'd not let anybody make music. But the people there said, music matters more than rules. And some of the greatest music in the world, from the Beatles and, and Otis Redding and Aretha and all of those folk, have been to muscle shows. It ain't the biggest place in the world, but it's an open place, open-hearted places where people matter more than rules. You go there. You feel better muscle shows. There's something about the whole spirit of the area that you know this is not a lie. And you got knuckleheads and racists and everybody else in muscle shows, but there's a core there that says we stood in solidarity with the family of God because we love people more than rules. It matters, folk. It matters today. It will matter tomorrow. It, it matters the next day. Do we understand that we just can't be rule followers? It's easy to do that because it, it lets you off the hook. Well, it would protest, but it's against the rules. We can't do that. 
I would bring you some water, but it's against the rules. It's just against the rules. How do you live like that? <laughs> How do you live like that in terror of the rules and in violation of God's word? How do we do it? But when the rules are broken for God, it makes a difference. The bar caves in Memphis. Stories is <laughs> bigger. We don't, we don't even know the full story. Cynthia in interviewed Ben Collett, the, the only surviving member of the band when he went down. And he shared with her a story about the band and their love and care for one another. And he talked about the one lone person, one lone white person in the band, Ronnie Caldwell, who was a few days shy of his 19th birthday. And what he said to her is, Ronnie came in the community, and the community embraced him. His skin color didn't matter. His mom even moved into a black area as a single parent so he could play music. He could walk the streets with his black girlfriend, and nobody did anything. But he said when the plane went down, and he was waving to Ronnie, hold on, hold on. And Ronnie just waved his hand like it's been a pleasure, been a pleasure being a part of your band. My brother, it's been a pleasure being part of your band. Did you watch the Titanic? One woman watched it 40 times, and I'm worried she's still running around loose. She watched it 40 times. But the Titanic, at the end, when the ship is going down, the musicians, and I love musicians because I think musicians understand life better than anybody else, but, but the musicians started playing to soothe the, the people as the ship went down. And then when they thought they were going to go and get on the uh, life raft, they stopped. Then they realized that they were not going to get on it, and so they took out the instruments and played and started playing again. And the band leader looked at the other band members, and what he said is, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure playing with you. At the end of your life, can you can look around and say, Cynthia, it's been a pleasure playing with you. Can you look around and say, Roger, it's been a pleasure playing with you. At the end of your life, and you know your ship is going down, are there people that you have worked with and loved and made a part of your life? Think about it. When we build these kind of relationships, and the rules don't matter, Ronnie Caldwell and his family got to see that the rules didn't matter because stereotypically, what the world would have said, did you come to this black neighborhood, Ronnie, and your mama, they're going to zap you, they're going to hurt you, they're going to rob you, they're going to kill you. But what he said was, these are my brothers, I'm playing music with them, and it really doesn't matter. And to know that he had a few moments to live at 19 years old and he could wave and say to Ben, thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you for loving me. In these brief, this brief time we played together, I felt whole. I felt somebody. I felt the magic, not just the magic of the keyboard. I felt the magic of the family of God as we did something unique and we made music together. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. If that doesn't get you, you can't be gotten. But you give thanks to God that we understand what Jesus was telling these people. You spend your life worried about the rules. The rules and our young women in abortion today, whether you're for or against abortion, the rules are killing our people because they go beyond abortion. They say you can't even go to the doctor. If you go to the doctor with your baby, everything is suspect. Because some pot-bellied men, old men, sitting on a bench somewhere, make a decision for boys and girls, and we let them. They can't have a baby, won't ever have a baby too old to do anything. And they can sit around and tell women what they ought to do. And we got people dumb enough to go vote for them again and again and again. We are called by God. Not to despise or hate these people, but pray for them, and you do what you got to do. You say to the world, 
I am not going to follow rules that kill my folk. I'm not going to follow rules that divide the world. I'm not going to follow rules that make me hate. I'm not going to follow those rules. But I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to be counted. And I'm going to say to God, what, do you have, what would you have me to do? Not what the government would have me to do, not what my state, not even what my president or my senator, nobody. What would you have me to do? And God is going to say, when you do what you're called to do, it's okay. Because, see, it ain't how long you live, it's how well you live. You know, you can, you can exercise and take the right method, do all that stuff. But your time is still going to be a short time compared to the ha hands of time. You live to be 150, that ain't long. You know, so what you, what you do with it, day by day, what you do 24-7 matters. What you do 20, how you treat children, how you treat the elderly, how you treat the homeless, how you treat the broke, the marginalized, the poor, it does matter. Because rules have kept us in place. Rules have kept us stunted. Rules have kept us. But when Jesus says, you heal every day, you don't just sit around on Sunday or Sunday with your legs crossed, sipping sweet tea, talking about, I can't do nothing today. Not today. <laughs> come back Monday. I know you're having a heart attack, but you come back Monday. It'll be all right. You take this fibrillator thing and just punch your heart and wait on Monday. Doesn't work that way, does it? When people need you, they need you now. Come back tomorrow. Cynthia was teaching school at um, Lane College, and college kids came through there. They were having a revival at the church next door, and they invited college kids, come get you some food. And so a bunch of kids came in late, and the women were putting the food up. And these kids were hungry enough to break in there. And they said, no, honey, come back tomorrow night. We're putting the food up now. Come back. And you could just smell the beef and the pig feet and the turnip rings and the cobbling. You smell all of the stuff. And they said, no, we don't want to. We can't, we can't stop doing what we're doing. We're going to put it up and you come back. I would never, ever set foot in the church again if I was a young person like that. Because you can't stop putting stuff up to help me. You following the rules. The rules say, I'm a, you do this, you do that. But I promise you, break the rules like you break them for your grandchildren. Amen? Are you meddling them right now? All right. Break the rules like you break them for grandchildren. I have done more for my grandchildren than I ever do for my children. My granddaughter asked for, for an American Girl doll. You might as well have been buying a person. I didn't know it. I'm used to buying a fat Cabbage Patch kid for $30 or Bobby for $10. But she said, you sure you're going to buy? I said, I'm going to get you two. <laughs> and I'm going to get the clothes and all the stuff. And I almost got divorced when Cynthia saw the credit card bill. <laughs> Make no sense. But treat the world like you treat your grandchildren, and it will make a difference. And you understand what the rules are for your, for your children. You break those rules because you love your grandchildren. As we move out of here today, understand and know that God created you for more than keeping the rules. His rules, yes. He created us to make a difference and to be better and to be better, and to be better. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Would you stand as you open the doors of the church on this blessed day?